Hello everyone, in my previous video I gave my first impressions of Betaflight 4.2 on the completely stock settings and it was rather underwhelming. There were some low throttle oscillations which actually was not Betaflight related so we cannot blame Betaflight for that issue. However, we can blame Betaflight for the really sluggish response and poor control feel that my quad had on the default settings. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing my personal preferences for all of the Betaflight features and settings because there are a lot of them. But before we hop into Betaflight, there are some things I want to mention. First of all, you should look at the Betaflight 4.2 tuning guide on the Betaflight GitHub. It is rather long. However, it has a ton of useful information, especially if you are having any problems. So make sure to check that out. Next, some people saw that I did not like how the default settings flew and immediately suggested that I should try Emu Flight. And I am planning on trying Emu Flight. However, in this video, I really want to emphasize how important tuning is. In my opinion, tuning is everything. All of the flight controller softwares these days fly really great. What is really going to separate the performance of your quad from the rest is tuning. Tuning can completely transform your quad from flying decently to flying amazingly. So that's what I'm focusing on in this video. Next, I want to talk about the Betaflight 4.2 default settings. So in my opinion, the default settings are basically designed to make any old quad which potentially has crappy electronics, a crappy configuration, fly half decently. And really it's to create the illusion that your quad is well tuned. So there's all these dynamic values that are changing and whatnot to really smooth out the quad and make it feel like it flies really good. In addition, your average pilot does not tune their PIDs and the default beta flight 4.2 settings, in my opinion, are set up under that assumption that the PIDs are not really going to be tuned. So that brings us to my personal preferences for all of these features and settings. So my philosophy is that I want the quad to do exactly what the sticks are telling it to do. And what this means is, first of all, it is going to reward a good pilot. It is up to the pilot to make sure all the motions are smooth if they need to be smooth. But other than that, if you're not smooth on the sticks, it is going to show up in your flight footage. In addition, my preferences for the settings are going to reward a well-configured quad with high quality electronics and it is going to reward a quad that has a good PID tune on it. And really, I think whether or not you're running my settings or the default settings or whatever settings you are running, you should tune your PIDs. It is a very easy way to get much better control feel and responsiveness out of your quad. And if you do not know how to tune your PIDs, that is totally okay. I have a in-depth PID tuning tutorial on the channel, which you should check out. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop into Betaflight and see my personal preferences for the features and settings. Okay, so I have a flight controller that has been reset to the default 4.2 settings connected. So let's go ahead and see what my preferences are. So we're gonna start off in the configuration tab. And the first thing that you wanna do is make sure you're running D-Shot and turn on bi-directional D-Shot if your ESCs support it. And the reason why you want to turn on bi-directional D-Shot is because this enables the RPM filter, which is probably the best filter that has ever been implemented in a flight controller software. And the reason why I think this is because the RPM filter is targeting the frequencies that are most likely going to be causing you problems in your tune, which are the frequencies associated with how fast your motors are spinning. Now, you wanna make sure that the number of motor poles is set correctly because if it is not set correctly, the RPM filter is going to be filtering out the wrong sets of frequencies. Now, something that is not related to flight performance, but I wanna mention is the maximum arm angle. I like to set this to 180 degrees, which allows the quad to arm no matter which orientation it is in, which is really helpful if you get stuck in a tree or something like that. Um, it allows you to arm the quad to try to spin the props to get the quad out of the tree. You can also get the same effect by turning off the accelerometer, which can also free up CPU load if you're running an older processor and you are running a lot of features and you need to free up some CPU load. Last thing I wanna mention on this tab 
is the PID loop frequency is set to two kilohertz by default. I have tried anywhere between one kilohertz and eight kilohertz and there's really no discernible difference. So I think this default setting is fine and I just leave it how it is. Okay, so next we are going to look at the PID tuning tab and this is where we really get into my preferences. Just to remind you, I really want the quad to respond exactly to my stick inputs. And another thing is that I want the quad to feel consistent in all scenarios. And there are a lot of features in here that are dynamically changing the PID values. And the PID values are the main things controlling your quad. So if the PID values are constantly changing, you're not really going to be getting a consistent feel. There was a really good comment on one of my videos which said that all of these features are like medicine. If you have some kind of ailment and you take medicine, it can do a lot to improve your condition. However, if you do not have that ailment, you probably should not take that medicine and that medicine really isn't gonna do anything for you anyways. So my philosophy is basically to turn off all of these features and then if you find out that your quad has some kind of issue or ailment, then turn on only the features that will solve that issue. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at the PID controller settings box here. And the first setting that I mess with is throttle boost. So what throttle boost does is it basically over boosts your motor outputs based on how fast you are moving the throttle stick. So if you move the throttle stick up quickly, it is going to command an even higher motor speed than you asked for. And this can be really helpful on quads such as whoops that have really poor throttle response. However, on my quad, which is a lightweight six inch with really good grip, really good throttle response, it can potentially make the quad feel overly sensitive and actually end up giving you more throttle RPM than you asked for, which goes against the idea of having the quad do exactly what you tell it to do. So for that reason, I just turn this off by setting the value to zero. Next up is iTerm Relax. What iTerm Relax does is it dynamically turns down the iTerm in bounce back scenarios, which is basically when you're moving the sticks really fast. I like to turn this off because first of all, I tune my PIDs and that inherently minimizes bounce back. And once again, I don't want my PID values changing all the time if I can avoid it. So I just turn this feature off. Really, I just fly around any bounce back that my quad has and I'd rather fly around bounce back than have a quad that does not react to my inputs consistently. Next up is D-min. D-min also is something that can help address a bounce back and also can address prop wash. However, if you look at the 4.2 tuning guide, there are actually some scenarios where they recommend turning off D-min because it can actually cause some problems. And really, this just goes along the same lines as iTerm Relax. I don't want my PIDs changing dynamically if I can avoid it and I fly around bounce back, I fly around prop wash anyways. And by tuning your PIDs, your prop wash is improved and your bounce back is improved anyways. So I just turned this off just like I turn relax. And lastly in this box is anti-gravity. So what anti-gravity does is it dynamically boosts the I term when you move the throttle quickly. This is to avoid a corner of the quad dipping. And this is usually caused by low quality ESCs or just quads that generally have poor throttle response, once again, such as whoops. However, I run high quality ESCs. My quad does not dip when I have this turned off, so I do not need this at all, so I just turn it off. Next up, we are going to look at all of these values over with the PIDs. You should be tuning your PIDs regardless of the settings you are running. If you do not know how to tune your PIDs, I have a full tutorial on how PIDs work and how to tune them, so go watch that. Now, the thing I wanna focus on here is feed forward. Now, feed forward is kind of a helper for the p-value because p-value generally dictates responsiveness. So feed forward adds an extra motor value on top of p to make your quad feel extra responsive when you move the sticks quickly. Now, once again, if you're tuning your PIDs, you're going to be improving the response already, and feed forward can actually cause an overshooting effect with the quad, which basically means that the quad is rotating more than you asked for. So 
I have actually experienced this. At one point I had feed forward on and I was having trouble hitting gaps because the quad was being hypersensitive and overshooting compared to what I was asking from the quad. So for that reason, I just turn this off completely to avoid that kind of issue. So it is true that some of these features could make the quad respond more accurately to my stick movements, but I like to err on the side of being too sluggish than too overreactive because it's easier to control a quad that is more sluggish than a quad that is overreactive to your stick inputs. So this is just what I like to do, just turn everything off. And the last thing that I want to talk about in the PID tuning tab are the filters. So the more filtering that you are running, the more delay there is going to be between you and the motion of the quad. So for that reason, you want to be running as little filtering as possible. So what I would recommend doing is just take these sliders and just move them one click towards the less filtering side at a time fly a little bit, make sure your motors aren't getting hot, make sure there are no weird oscillations that are happening all of a sudden. Just keep moving them over until you get hot motors or weird oscillations or until the sliders are completely maxed out. And then the other thing is that I have heard that for the gyro RPM filter that you really only need two harmonics so you can change that to two and reduce a little bit of latency that way. So once again, we are trying to decrease the filtering to reduce the delay and thus increase the responsiveness of the quad. Lastly, we're going to look at the receiver tab. What I want to address here is the RC smoothing. Now RC smoothing can be helpful if all you want is just a really smooth quad or you have really jittery signal from your transmitter. However, just like the filtering for the gyro, filtering for your RC inputs adds delay. However, one of the reasons why I think they have RC smoothing on by default is because a lot of the features in the PID tuning tab are based off of the changes in the stick position. So if there are a lot of jitters in the RC signal, it can be hard to figure out what the stick is actually doing. But by smoothing out all the jitters, uh, it makes it a lot more clear to those features what is actually going on and actually helps them to work as intended. However, since we turned off all those features, there's really no benefit to having the RC smoothing on unless you have super jittery signal. So I just like to turn this off. And I believe that just turning the auto smoothing value to zero turns this off. However, I like to go totally overkill and make sure the derivative filter type is set to off and then change the channel smooth to the least amount possible, which is throttle. Okay, those are my personal preferences for the Betaflight features and settings. This configuration combined with a good PID tune should really improve the responsiveness and control feel of your quad. And in my opinion, it really has this raw and edgy feeling to it compared to the really smooth over and sluggish Betaflight defaults. So give these settings a try and let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you liked this video or it was helpful to you, please make sure to give it a like. And 84% of you guys watching this right now are not subscribed to the channel. So if you enjoy this kind of content and you want to support my channel, please make sure to get subscribed. Thanks for watching.